Hello everyone, welcome back to Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah Presents Crochet from the Beginning with our Towel Topper. Um, in this one we are going to actually attach crochet, crochet attach to the top of the towel that we went ahead and did our little sewing at the top on, okay? Now the yarn that I'm using, in case you're wondering, this is just some Red Heart Super Saver. Um, this is bright yellow and boy is it bright. I don't remember where I got it. Um, this may have been in a haul um, that was like a, an El Cheapo haul for me. Not sure. Don't remember. I've had it for quite a while. Now, the first thing we do, just like we normally do, we uh, attach our yarn to our crochet hook. And by the way, for this, I generally use uh, the recommended yarn for the, uh, the recommended hook for the yarn, rather. In this case, this is... Uh, Red Heart, it says to use a five millimeter hook, and that is what I'm using here. You do you. You know, if you are using a yarn that calls for a four for some reason and you want to use a five, great. Or other way around, that's all good. Um, this hook is nothing special. This is an El Cheapo hook that I got from Wish.com. It was cheap. It works really well. It's actually comfortable to use, and uh, yeah, just to let you know. Now, got my yarn attached to my hook. I use a slip knot. Um, let me see if I can get this back out of the way. There we go. Now, we are going to start working from the front of our towel, sort of. The first stitch tends to be the weird one, okay? Because we want to make sure this is secure and it's on all of the stitches. So I will kind of go to this bottom one here. Remember we did that cross and then up? going to stick my hook in there and this first one because I end up attaching it pretty tightly it's kind of hard to wiggle in there wiggle it just a little bit um yeah sorry throw back to the 80s and we're just going to single crochet right in there now I'm going to just single crochet across on this first row for each individual stitch you're just going to wiggle it in pull up a loop yarn over and pull through those two that are on your hook and yes you do want to leave a tail so that you can leave it in afterwards okay again we're gonna wiggle in and try not to split it like i just did I'm telling you this is not a perfect science here this is a beginner showing y'all how she does her beginner stuff yarn over pull it through and you don't want to crochet these too tightly just kind of let the yarn tell you what the tension is going to be. And yes, I know these are wild colors. This towel is a wild color. I think it'll add a nice blast of summertime color somewhere. Okay, push it in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through. And I'm going to do this all the way across, and with the magic of youtube you won't have to watch every single stitch because we are just repeating ourselves all the way across there is no difference there is no variance you just may get a little faster at it the more that you do it because it does feel a little bit easier once you do this a few times or a few dozen times see why i say to crochet these first to to wind these first loops around kind of loose that one went in so easily yes but when i pull too tight on this tension it gets a little harder and it's my own doing. I didn't farm this out to somebody. Can't get the hubby to do these for me. He refuses, I've tried. Uh, anyway, I'm going to pause this and meet you towards the end. Alrighty, through the magic of YouTube, um, all of this on the top has been done all the way across in those single crochet that we're joining with. Got a few left. We're just gonna do these together. You know, a lot of people talk smack about um, Red Heart Super Saver, but I have to tell you, these two colors, this bright orange and this bright yellow, are the first two skeins of yarn that I've had in a long time that I have not had massive yarn barf out of pulling a uh, center pull. Just saying. And yes, it's rough on your hands, but these are small projects and the yarn is tough. It will last a good while. And these are kitchen towels. Like I said, I don't use mine just for decoration. Mine get used, they get hung. I have a double oven and I have four towels hanging up there. And those are just for, you wash your hands, you dry them because I'm always washing my hands in the kitchen. Okay, getting down to the end, this is, you know, the weird bit. We're gonna go into this last stitch. Just wiggle it. Oh, good gravy, split it. 
try not to split it like I just did, but it happens. There you go. Now these two here, and you see this was sort of the last vertical stitch. I am going to go into these. I say I'm going to together. They're a little tight because of the way that I put them in there. Pull it out. Pull it through. When I get to the end of these, you can stop there if you want to. I go around back and I do one more. And yeah, that seems a little counterintuitive. We're not even going to count it later. We're not going to use that as part of our attaching chains or anything. Okay. I do that just because it makes it a little bit more secure. Now what I'm going to do here, because that is it for this row, I'm going to turn my work. Now, in most circumstances, most people will tell you to chain one and turn your work or chain two or whatever. I like the edge that this one gives, the side edge, if I don't chain one. That means you have to look for your stitches a little bit differently on that very beginning and end, but that is all that there is of that. Sorry for the jump there. We just had our mail arrive at the door and we had a package. But yeah, I like the edge that it gives when I don't do it. So I'm just going to turn my work. Make sure all this stuff is out of the way. And I am doing from here on out, it's half double crochet. That's it. That's all. Nothing else. I'm going to wrap around. If you remember from our half double crochet, the first row of half double crochet I do has no decreases in it. And I will do this all the way across. Just like I said, this is an easy project that once you have done one or two of them, you can watch TV while you do it. If somebody else is driving and you're riding on the road, you can do these. I tend to not do the stitching around the top when I'm in the car because, yeah, too much movement for me. But I do this, do these in the car. I'll get a whole bunch of these done at first. Like if I choose my colors ahead of time, I'll go ahead and get all of my tops done. I have some of the colors with me and just work on them. Okay, I'm going to pause this again and use the magic of YouTube to get to the very end. So here we go. And by the magic of YouTube, once again, here we are near the end of the row. I'm just going to finish this row up because remember this row doesn't have any decreases in it at all. This is just us uh, half double crocheting all the way across. Now we're sloshing you here in the background. That is my sweet little teeny cat Oscar getting a drink out of his fountain. And this time he's drinking from where the fountain pours across and it makes it sound all splashy. So anyway. Okay, it looks like I've got one more right there. At the very beginning of the towels, where it's kind of weird with these extra stitches and you've got tails and everything hanging across. But that's it. We've reached the end. Now first, now remember on these, I'm not chaining one or two or anything before I turn my work because I like the way the edge works. So I'm going to turn my work. And before I start doing these stitches, I'm going to set that down, get out a stitch marker, put that back over there, go to the other end of my work, and I'm going to count up in this row six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put my stitch marker in that sixth one. The reason for that is, on this first row of decreases, we are decreasing by three stitches on each side. We're going to do three 
of the half double crochets together on this side and then half double crochet just regular regular easy peasy let it squeezy all the way across until we get to this side and then that is the correct number to do our half double crochets that way I don't have to stop and keep counting 53 times on this side I just found that this works for me if you can eyeball and go oh yeah that's six stitches I'm done and not have the TV distract you or the cat or the hubby or whatever great you do better at this than I do so I have to use a stitch marker okay and with these because of the way I do it without chaining first I end up with an interesting little bar across here but that's okay wrap around put your hook into that first stitch pull up a loop remember we're doing decreases here go through the first two on your hook and looks I'm going to do that again because I did split my yarn okay through, through the first pull up and yes I leave all the mistakes in one I, I'm awful at editing and two I make mistakes it is what happens go through the first two there we go no splitties there then I'm going to go through that go into that next stitch pull up the loop and go through all three I said go through all three <laughs> There we go. Yes, like I said, I also do talk to my yarn. We have done our first decrease, and we're going to do two more right here. Okay, so we're going to yarn over, go into our stitch, pull up a loop, go through the first two, go into that next stitch, pull up a loop, go through all three, and then one more. This is the only row that we will do this three times on each side. We just we give it a good kickstart. Okay, yarn over, go through, pull up, yarn over, go through two, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. That is our decrease for this side. And notice it's starting to curl. And you know what? That's what we want. We're going to curl into the wrong side. Notice how we started it off with that fold in the very beginning? That way it'll just start wrapping nicely. Now I'm just going to do the standard easy peasy lemon squeezy half doubles until I get to my stitch marker and I will join you back there by the magic of YouTube. Ta-da! Magic of YouTube. I have gone to the end. Notice this is where I put my stitch marker. Okay, so I'm going to take that little sucker out for now, but it's not going to go far because we're going to be using it again. Let me put it here so I don't drop it. Okay. Now we know that since we hit the stitch marker, these are all going to be uh, half double crocheting two together. Or we're doing decreases. Okay. Yarn over. Pull up a loop. Go through the first two. Go into the next stitch. Pull up a loop and go through all three. And we'll do it again. Go through, pull up, pull through all three. Okay. Yarn over, go in. This is our third stitch that we're doing. Pull through the first two. And you may have to twist your work up to look and see where that stitch is. Ah, good gravy. I missed a stitch when I was counting. Look at that. There's actually two stitches left instead of one. So I put my stitch marker in the wrong place. You know what? It happens. No fret. No harm, no foul. I'm going to count again. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's that sixth one there. So, good gravy. Let's see if I can do this right. See, I told you, I make mistakes, even with the magic of YouTube. This one will be a regular. It's okay to frog. Really, it is. It is not a big deal to pull out some stitches and redo it. Okay, let me count again. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's that six little guy there. Okay. Now we're doing our decreases. Ta da! <laughs> Go in, pull it up. First two. And all three. Yarn over. Go in. Pull up your loop. Go through the first two. Oh, don't yarn over there. See, two on the hook. 
have I done? I tell you what, I think I need some coffee. Good grief. All right, there are my six again. I am starting this over. Yeah, and I don't know how to run that video back. So you get to watch all of my mistakes, at least for this row. <laughs> all right, we're doing this again. Yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, go into that next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through those three. One down, two more decreases to go. <laughs> yarn over, pull up your loop, yarn over, pull through those first two, go to the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. Then these two little guys down here in the corner, okay, yarn over, go into that first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, go into your last stitch in the row, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through three. After much consternation, I have managed to finish this row. Good gravy. Okay, let's see what we have here. Notice it is starting to curl under on both of these sides, and that is the only row where we're doing three decreases on each side, just to give it a good head start and boost. Now, before we turn our work, we're going to go over here to the opposite side of where we're going to be working, find the end where we have that bar across. See, that's another reason when we put the, uh, the stitches the way I do, I can really find that last stitch easily. So, one, two, three, because we're only going to be decreasing two stitches on each side. Okay, let me do it again. Two, three, four. There. On this side, I'm just going to turn my work and I'm going to do two half double crochet decreases for this row on each side and for every row there on out until we get to where we want to be. And where we want to be is to have exactly nine stitches when we get to the middle, which is why we're only decreasing on the outside edges. So eventually it meets in the middle. Okay, I'm going to start off a few of these here. Pull through, pull through two. Next stitch, pull up, yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over, pull up your loop. Pull through two, next stitch, pull up, all three, and that's your decreases on that side. You are done. Now we're just half double crocheting till the end here. And I'm just going to work while I talk here. Um, what we want to do is do our decreases on each side until we end up with nine stitches left. Yeah. If you are decreasing and you end up with ten or with eleven, 11 is easy. You want to reduce on each side, one on each side. And I will show you when we get up there. But if you have one, like say you have 10 stitches left, and well, you can't do one on each side because then that would take us down to eight instead of nine. In that case, and in that case only, you'll do a half double crochet two together right in the middle. It really won't be noticeable, but it'll bring you to the right number of stitches because it is important that we have nine when it's all said and done. Because we eventually have to put in buttonholes for our button. Now I use these big honkin' buttons that I find at Walmart in packages because they are cheap, they are big, they're easy, you can do really cool accent colors with them, and because my yarn needle with yarn fits very easily through those buttonholes. See that? Because if your yarn needle won't fit through, then you can't attach them with yarn. You have to attach them with some kind of thread or something smaller. Yeah, that's why I like using the big honkin' buttons for these. And also, it works out with the way I do my buttonholes. My buttonholes are three stitches. Yes, we will get there, I promise you. But for right now, we're gonna wrap this part up 
and we will continue this next week with what to do when you get your decreases down to nine. And if mine ends up having 10 or something, I will show you doing that uh, decrease in the middle because I never know, because I don't count my initial sewing on. Sometimes I end up with a 10, sometimes I end up with an 11 and have to do a one decrease on each side. You just wanna keep it balanced. And we're using all of the same skills that we have this whole time. Split my yarn. Try not to split your yarn like I just did. Yep. Told you. Real crocheter, real mistakes, and a real beginner right here. Okay. But uh, I will meet you again when we are ready to do those nine stitches. See y'all next time. Thank you for coming by for Crochet from the Beginning, the uh, Crochet Towel Topper series. Bye, y'all.